All right, fruit lovers, this is Ross. Today's video, we're talking about pomegranates and how you can grow pomegranates in zone seven. I think it's actually quite a reliable fruiting plant if you choose the right variety. And so for me, I've actually seen a lot of success so far with the variety called Salavatsky. And that variety for me has gone all the way down into the single digits, almost close to zero degrees Fahrenheit and has not taken any damage. So that's great news for most of us in colder zone sevens where it can be difficult to grow pomegranates. You might be able to get away with this variety as well, Salavatsky in zone six. And I have a couple friends who have it in a similar position right up against their house. And it's been there for years and they have a reliable crop of pomegranates. So this is a different variety though. I wanted to showcase for you guys today. This is called Sumbar. Now, Sumbar is also, I believe, a Russian variety of pomegranate. And Sumbar is said to be the earliest ripening, soft-seeded pomegranate. And so that, what that means is there are two types of pomegranates. There's hard-seeded and soft-seeded. Wonderful is a variety that we get at the grocery store. And when you bite into Wonderful, the seeds, you can eat them. You don't have to spit them out because they're typically on the softer side. Now, Salavatsky, I believe, is said to be more of a hard-seeded variety, but I have no problem eating a harder seed and swallowing that and enjoying it. Um, but again, Sumbar, what it really has going for it is that early ripening nature. And so if you look at all the pomegranates I've grown, whether they're in containers, whether they're also planted in the ground, this is the one that's actually the furthest ahead at this point in the season. We have a number of pomegranates on this really small tree, young. It's planted here again in the Philadelphia area, zone seven. I count about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight pomegranates. I don't wanna to get too carried away actually with this tree. I found that last year when this was in a 10 gallon pot and I realized the potential of it and how early it actually is. Um, I decided uh, not to thin out the pomegranates. And it turns out that pomegranates, they need to be thinned. Uh, so if you want to have a successful crop, I have to probably bring this number down, which will inevitably probably be around 10 or 12. I think there's still some that are going to set on this bush. But I probably have to bring this down uh, close to maybe four, uh, maybe four or five if I can get away with it. And so that's just a reality, I think, that people don't realize that some of these actually overbear. You end up having smaller fruits, just like other fruit trees, where you have too many fruits on the trees. Uh, the, the fruits end up being smaller, uh, not very sweet, or not even really ripening properly. So I've actually come in here, already did some thinning, removed about four or five of them. Um, but I will probably go through here, select the very uh, best looking ones that don't really have any damage, They've got good size to them, and um, that will be kind of my next step. But this is exciting because Sumbar is also said to be quite cold hardy. Now, is it going to have the same success that I've had with Salavatsky? I don't know. And so that's kind of the experiment here that we're doing. You can see the progression of some of these pomegranates. They're quite beautiful. Uh, the, the tree really, when it flowers, looks like a Christmas tree. Um, so I would highly recommend this even for ornamental purposes. The trees are generally beautiful, drought tolerant, easy to grow, problem free, pest free. Uh, I think the more sunlight you can give them, the more heat you can give them, the better. Uh, and it's really, again, all about the variety when growing them here in a colder climate. So that's what I'll be doing coming up is I'll just be thinning these out, paying attention to them, getting this young plant more established. Maybe I'll give it some irrigation here and there. I've already watered it maybe a couple times. As I said, they are drought tolerant, but you definitely want to water them to get them established. In the first couple of years, it can definitely be a good idea. Typically here though, in the Philadelphia area, what we need to do is just eliminate any competition, any weeds and add lots of mulch mulch, 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 You're, you would be amazed how less water and how more quickly these trees and perennials that you plant can get established just by adding mulch. It does so many functions. It keeps the soil moist. 
um, gives the plants what they need. Also breaks down, the wood chips break down in the soil into compost, which feeds them life. It improves the life in the soil so dramatically that also it makes not only the minerals that's in the wood chips break down and available, but now the extra life in the soil is able to make use better of the water and also the minerals and NPK in the soil than otherwise. So there's so many benefits to using wood chips if you have them easily found in your area. Uh, again, I think growing pomegranates here is kind of a, a joke. The only issue is protecting them from the cold. And in my opinion, this is actually my third favorite fruit. It's the fig, the persimmon, and this has always been in the top three for me. And I was, not, I was really surprised last year when I tasted some of those Salavatsky pomegranates to find out that they taste way better than the wonderful variety we get at the store. Uh, and that's just the beauty, I think, of growing food at home, harvesting it at the right time, but also choosing the varieties that might actually taste better. So, uh, yeah, that's a little lesson there on pomegranates. Thanks for watching, guys. See you for the next one, all right? Hit the subscribe button for me. Hit that like button. I'll keep you guys updated on this as we go further throughout this tree's life.